Imagine you've crafted a beautiful email with valuable content and in your email marketing tool, you can see that people are clicking on your links to see your products, but then what? How can you know what happens once they land on your website? This is a question I get from time to time from my clients and luckily you can easily see this in Google Analytics 4. So in this video, I'll show you how to analyze your email campaign performance on your website in GA4. Hello data people, I'm Robert from Clicks.ly and I'm here to help you understand and analyze data to make better decisions in e-commerce. So let me show you what's going on in GA4 dashboard. So to see how your email campaign is performing in GA4, you need to come here in the reports and then under acquisition, you have traffic acquisition. Now yours might be uh, called slightly differently acquisition, but just click around these menus and find traffic acquisition. And once you land here, we're looking at session primary uh, channel group. So session is important here. So in this view, what you can do is just you scroll down and you can see that you have different channels here. We can immediately just go into the search box and type email because we're only interested in email. There you go. Now we see only email campaigns, but we don't see the campaign name. So we can click on this little plus here and we can just type campaign here. You go. We have the session campaign here. For some reason, the name is here on the right and the traffic source. This makes no sense, but we just select that one. You can see that you have your campaigns and this was what here's the dates. You can change them from here last 28 days, but you could choose a longer time period as well. Now, in case you don't see anything here, you don't see any campaigns, uh, you haven't set up a UTM parameters. J4 works with the uh, UTM parameters and it's quite simple to set up. There's even a tool how to do it, but you need to add these parameters to your links in your email marketing tool. And if you want to learn how to do this, there's a, a video here in the top right corner. If you click there, I'll show you how to use UTM parameters, how to use the tool and where to place the link so that you can start actually seeing data here. So check that out if you're interested. But in any case, what you should be comparing to is campaigns to each other, especially if they're similar campaigns, if they're both sales campaigns, then you would like to, uh, in the perfect world, you would compare sales campaign with the sales campaign because some of your emails will be also informational and um, then it's not fair to compare sales email versus informational. So what I like to look at here is obviously how many people actually came here. And if you're wondering, well, wait a minute, well, uh, how many, what is the sessions? What users, like who are these people? These are the people that actually clicked on the link in your email. And if you go into your email marketing tool and you have difference between uh, this number, the users and the one in the, in your tool, this is normal. You're probably, some people click on the link and maybe they just uh, close the uh, tab immediately. That can happen quite easily. So there'll be some discrepancy there. I wouldn't worry about that. We're just interested in what's going on here. So what I like to look at is uh, engaged sessions, <clears throat> average engagement time. So for example, for these campaigns, we clearly see this one had uh, the highest uh, average engagement time, but there's also only three people. So it's not really going to really count, but let's see at uh, these two campaigns, they were quite similar. You can see that uh, they're around the same um, uh, time. And if we look at the engaged sessions, well, there's a huge difference just because there were also more uh, users and sessions in between these two campaigns. So V1 was had just more people coming in. Another metric I love to look at is obviously revenue. Here we have revenue at the, uh, at the end of it. And uh, what's important here is the session key event rate. This is basically conversion rate, but you need to choose here purchase. Now it becomes purchase conversion rate. And you obviously want to know how well people are uh, going from an email subscriber to a, um, a customer. So this kind of tells you that. If I compare these two campaigns, they're doing pretty quite similar, I would say around 5% uh, conversion rate. And that really depends on your shop. In some shops that might be a decent number, in some shops that might be really low one. So you need to just compare what you had in the past. So from here, I would just look at how many people came to the site and how well they're converting and how much revenue I'm driving through different campaigns. You can just compare them to each other. By the way, if you're struggling with GA4 and it just doesn't make any sense, but you'd really need it for your job, then 
stop wasting time and just join my five-day email course where I'll go through the most critical reports, metrics, and things you need to know to use J4 specifically for e-commerce. You can join for free by clicking on the first link in the video description. But sometimes this is not enough and you want to actually look at specific landing page and how well your uh, campaign is doing there. In this case, you can just come here on the left and find engagement and under here is landing page report. Again, these might be called slightly different in yours, so just open up and find landing page. So in this report, in the landing page report, you can see you have all your landing pages and a landing page in GA4 just means the first page that people arrive to when they came to your website. So for example, here, the top three is the home page, not set, and then you have a shop slash new. So um, those are kind of the, where people come first. And not set simply means that something has gone wrong with the tracking and we don't know uh, what page they landed first. So let's say we want to look at some of this. Well, first of all, I want to look only for email. So what I can do here is add a filter and let's add a filter and just type in here default. And we're going to choose session default channel group and then exactly matches. And we're going to say email. There you go. There's an email apply. And now all the data you see here is only for email. Well, this doesn't really tell me much, but let's say I have this landing page. I want to look more data, see just what's going on specifically with this page. Again, just copy this, place it in here and then search for it. Make sure there's no spaces here. So sometimes it just doesn't want to search because there's a space here. Okay. Now we have this page and I want to add a bit more details. I'm going to click on this little plus and search for campaign. And again, we're looking at session campaign here. And now we have the data here. We see now the landing page. This is the landing page and the campaign they came through. You can see all the data, same stuff that we looked before. So now I could come here again and look at the purchase rate and you can see that here. Whoa, that's a big difference on this specific page. We have 2% for the uh, V1 and almost nine, eight and a half percent for V2. Huge difference. And also people are just staying longer. So this would mean I would uh, like to look in more into the V2 campaign, why people are staying longer and also converting better to customers. Uh, something is going on here. It could be something to do with the email itself, the setup, uh, or maybe even uh, if we segment our emails, uh, the type of people that receive the email. This is something I would need to look into in the email marketing tool itself. This is how I would, I would do it. Just compare two uh, campaigns to each other. And one more thing I want to show you is that you can actually, instead of always clicking around and, you know, getting to this, you need to filtering stuff. You can add this report already here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I don't have rights in this specific uh, GA4, but on my personal website, if I come here, so this is my personal website and here I have the rights and you can see you have library here. So what you can do is just click on it and notice how you have here acquisition, engagement, monetization, retention, and it's the same as here. So this life cycle, this is the library, but we don't need the library. We need to create a new report. Let's click on create new report and we need a detailed report. In this case, we're just going to use traffic acquisition. You can see there's the session primary and so on. We're looking for the session, not the first user, but the session. So let's select it. Now, don't worry. You can rename it in a bit. Uh, here, what we can do is we can control. So we see, for example, these two, we could hide the line chart if we don't want it. And also the bar chart. Uh, but I actually like to keep at least the line chart. And then if I scroll down, there's the table here below. Here we have the default channel grouping as primary dimension, but we can change it. So uh, before we do anything, I want to add a filter here on the right. Let's click on filter again. I'm just going to look for default session, default channel grouping and exactly matches. And we're going to again look for email and there you go. Email apply. So then I only see stuff for email. Of course, now it doesn't make sense. We only have email and it's the only one. So let's change the dimension from here. Right now it's set to this one is the default. It's the primary channel group. In your case, you want to just come here and drag this campaign here on top and let's make it the default one set as default and then apply. So now you'll only see the campaign names here on top of that. If you want to see something else, so we have session campaign here. Uh, what if you want to see a landing page? 
On top of that, we could also add another dimension and it could be just landing page. We can say landing page and you can just drag it to be the second one here and apply. So now if you want to look specifically for landing pages, you could come here and click on this and you have landing page here. It will change it and then we could come again here and just look for campaign, session campaign. And there you go. We have now the same report and we could now just save it, save and let's give it a name and then save it. Okay, report is saved in library. So if we go back, we have the report here. So I have it, it's here. I have it twice just because I already played around earlier with it. So what we can do now is we come to this life cycle and click on these three dots, edit. And now just search here, email. So I have two of them. Uh, I'm just going to drag one of them here like this. You see email campaign traffic and then just save. Okay, now if we go back. And now when I open up the acquisition report, you can see I have email campaign traffic here and it's exactly how we had it before. It will not show the secondary dimension. You can see here we only have landing page, but it remembers it. So I could now change it from here. Either I just come here and change to session campaign or I can look for a specific landing page. Uh, I can look for campaign here. And there you go. That's how easy it is to add this report to your GA4 so that you don't need to every time click around and filter things out and it will be just there for a quick overview. Okay, cool. Now you know how to get insights about your email campaigns, but just looking at data without knowing how to turn it into insights will just waste your time. That's why you should watch this video next where I'll teach my six-step system to turn data into insights.